Its waters may be beautiful, but some African rivers like this one offer the perfect breeding ground for insects that spread disease, as Marco Juma knows too well. I was having a headache, and uh, I was having a swelling in joints, and I was sleeping now and then. Even by daytime, I used to sleep, and I thought it might have been a sleeping sickness because we were nearby the water. But a team of researchers in northern Uganda have developed a sustainable method to combat the spread of the disease. So we're here at the riverside. This is the habitat for tsetse fly. The tsetse fly are particularly attractive to this colour of blue that we have on the target, um, and it's impregnated with insecticide. So the tsetse fly towards the target from a distance and collides with the target, and at that point it takes some insecticide, um, which kills it. And we're putting these targets every 50 metres along the rivers. More than 35,000 such targets have been placed along riverbanks like this over the past six months. Researchers see this as a cheap and simple way of killing the tsetse flies and controlling the spread of sleeping sickness. Today, this local hospital rarely treats sleeping sickness. Medical officials have seen the very worst of the disease. At its peak, up to 70 patients were being treated here at any one time. The early symptoms include things like fevers, low-grade fevers, headaches, joint pains, and muscle pains. Young girls in their early marriages will present with amenorrhea. They miss their pillows, they think they are pregnant, you don't see them pregnant. In young men who have just married, they have what we call impotency, a loss of appetite for sex. They think they are bewitched. Using a mobile laboratory, the team are testing the blood of villagers to assess the current scale of sleeping sickness. But if you went back 10, 15, 20 years, it would have been thousands of people per year being infected with this disease. Now it's significantly lower than that. Monitoring tsetse fly levels is also a vital part of the project. A significant reduction has been noted. Where we are currently working with the 10 targets, I think the tsetse population has been reduced by up to 90%. And this is largely because the 10 targets are cheap, and they can be procured in large numbers, and the density per area is large. Soon, these methods may be rolled out in other countries such as the Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan. And so hopefully, for communities here and elsewhere, their rivers will only be a source of life and no longer a source of disease. Mariam Abdallah, BBC News, West Nile in Northern Uganda.